You know, I could call you a murderer, write some pieces of paper that proves you're a murderer. To make you a murderer is false proposition. There's no doubt that creepy predators are lurking around us and we have to take care of our kids. Today, we'll be going through these cases where cops arrived on time to rescue these children from these creeps. Brian Peed, a counselor for vulnerable youth, was found guilty of trying to pay a 14-year-old girl 300 pounds for some not-so-family-friendly services. However, the teen turned out to be an undercover police officer. I what you think's happened to him. Well, I don't really wish to make any other statement other than I wish to report officially on the record um, corruption in this case entirely. So I'm afraid that uh, that is my version of events, you see. Okay. So it's not basically what you're going to want to hear, but I'm afraid that is the truth. So um, uh, that that is it, in effect. It's quite simple. Okay. There is corruption that has gone on in this case. I've been able to prove that corruption. Peed was found guilty in November 2011 of harassing his daughter and granddaughter. He was then given a restraining order prohibiting him from getting in touch with them. But he consistently violated the terms of the order. Um, claimed that he had gone to Bexley Grammar School to pick up a card that I had allegedly sent to my two granddaughters who attend the school. Well, in June of this year, I went to Bexley Grammar School and met with the head teacher. And he said that the, the police have never been to that school at all in relation to my granddaughters. Of course, the police have been to that school, they go to every school, yeah. but not in relation to my granddaughters. It was completely different. So he said the whole thing is bogus. It did not happen. The card never reached the school. Well, as you can imagine, um, uh, that was um, um, of, of great significance. Peed was allowed to express his views and make his allegations. Peed asserted that corruption was involved in every case that was related to him. Well, either he's lying or the, or the, or the head teacher's lying, and I don't see any reason for the head teacher to lie. And so after my meeting with the head teacher, I sent a uh, affidavit to him that I wrote out asking him to sign. I've not yet got that back because it could have been sent back to me, but I don't always get all of my mail. But that's another issue we, we don't need to discuss right now, although it is of significance. So he, he committed perjury, Perjury Act 1911, you'll be familiar with. And consequently, that's a, a fraudulent trial. And equally in 2011, the 1st of November, Bexley Magistrates, uh, 1st of November 2011, um, that has got um, corruption all over that case as well. He had continued to insist that he was wrongly charged in both 2011 and 2015 rather than acknowledging his own crime. He further claimed that the court had no authority to issue him a restraining order. So you see, the 2015 case was built on the 2011 case. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll have to refer to Denin again, I'm afraid. You cannot build something on nothing. So the 2011 case was wrong, was rotten to the core. If you're going to build a case 2015 on that, that's also rotten to the core. And then, to wit, DC Zia Zaya has in fact committed perjury. Okay. So, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions in more depth in a second, but so just so I get your um, explanation correct, what you're telling me is, uh, as far as you're concerned, the court case that issued that restraining order didn't have the power to issue it to you. Correct, it can't do. Things took a turn when the investigator asked the next question. P had realized that he had made a mistake by admitting that he had written a letter to his MP. For that letter. I wrote to my MP for sure. I'm always writing to my MP. Yes, yeah, so I, I, I found a couple of letters like that. Um, just very interesting. It says it's an open letter. Was it only published on that website? Or did you actually post him, or I say hand deliver even? Did you actually hand deliver him the letter as well? Yes, it was hand delivered to his house. To his house. Okay, it was by yourself? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, by me. Superb. Um, and what's that? Before or after September 29th, did it go on the website first or did you hand deliver it first? Uh, 
I do believe it must have been sent, uh, given to him uh, first, because I wouldn't then have been able to say it was hand delivered. Peed persistently attempts to deflect the questioning by acting as though the questions are the problem and not his pattern of gaslighting and fabricating, and keeps on claiming that the officer committed perjury. Breach the conditions of the restraining order because you published on the internet um, documentation that refers to people that, according to the Inner London Crown Court restraining order, you were not allowed to. Would you agree or disagree with me on that? Well, I would disagree okay. uh, for two well, reasons. Here you go. One reason is I never said I published anything on the internet. I said I authored a letter which I delivered to my MP. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I'm, I, I'm absolutely concerned, really seriously concerned, that a detective constable in a metropolitan police force can be told of perjury in a case in which a bogus restraining, I say bogus, you yeah. would disagree, in which a bogus restraining order is issued. For me, you see, I'm old school, I'm 64. Peard remained adamant that the charges against him resulted from corruption and argued that the restraining order lacked validity. If a member of the public tells me that in a trial, a policeman has committed perjury, alarm bells should be ringing. Mm -hmm. and therefore any assumptions you therefore make like you just have that you've read this there's a piece of paper that says there's an order oh you must be guilty that's dangerous dangerous thinking that's Orwellian dystopian society we live in mm -hmm. right you may not understand what I'm saying you don't have no, to no. Um, your focus to me should have been oh let's stop there let's ex Let's explore your claim, which I said was official complaint. Mm -hmm. I specifically use those words for the tape. Mm -hmm. My official complaint is against DC Zia of perjury against the 1911 Perjury Act. I've then given you a, a, a other evidence from uh, Stephen Elphick, the head teacher of Bexley Grammar School, who confirmed. Peard makes clear what he believes and states his supporters' views, but avoids addressing the fact that his granddaughter and daughter maintain their accusations against him, despite no apparent motive to make such claims. We investigated why, when I went to Teapot Island in Maidstone in March of this year, uh, and then two day, three or four days later I wrote to the Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Dick, I'd gone to Teapot Island to give my in-laws, my daughter's in-laws, all information about my innocence, including a letter from Sir Henry Bellingham saying Brian Peed is innocent and a number of a victim of a number of miscarriages of justice. I gave that to my son-in-law's parents. Three days later, I wrote to Commissioner Dick. Two to three days after that, I get arrested and another bogus charge. To be honest with you, the rule of law doesn't really apply in this country anymore, certainly not to me. I cannot get a fair trial, because if I told you everything about this case, you wouldn't believe me. But I'll tell you that we're in Bromley for a reason. Later on, Pete claimed that his actions were conducted for research purposes. However, the judge overseeing the case rejected his version of events. That I'm not in this room here today anything to do with a breach of a restraining order i'm in here to do only to do with the fact that i um am if you if you want to call it this way i'm an author of, of, of um of, of books related to uh, child abuse for my own personal reasons i was abused as a child in a children's home i got away with it lightly compared with my brother who was eight or nine and was buggered regularly by police officers, by priests, and everything else, right? So that's my motivation, right? So I will expose everything I can to the di my dying breath about organized um, abuse. DC Stanford opted to conclude the interview, recognizing that little progress could be made through further interrogation. That, um, I find this a very disturbing interview mm -hmm. from the point of view that I've I have now given you several um, 
problems around this case because another one, of course, is is, is a commander of, of Lewisham, Mr. Kate Halpin. Can I just hold you for just one second? I'm aware of the allegations you're making against uh, the, uh, the Chief Superintendent, DCG, and things like that. My understanding is all of these complaints have already been made. You've obviously already made them to your own... They've never been investigated. But you've already made them. They've never been investigated. OK, what I'm saying, though, is if you've already made the complaint... They've never been officially made to the police. Pied was then given a 36-month supervision after persuading a child to engage in sexual activity. Additionally, he was also added to a sex offender list for a duration of five years. Whereas this confrontation was pretty smooth, the next one will leave you stunned. Step out of the car. Step Whoa. out of the car. <laughs> On April 27, 2019, Corporal TJ Session was in pursuit of Walter Emilio Orellana, who was wanted on three felony warrants, including sexual abuse of a child. The corporal decided to go to his girlfriend's home, and surprisingly, he found Walter inside his car parked right outside her home. How you doing? What's your name? Mark. Walter? Mark. Your name is not Walter? Why? Because that's your name. But why though? Okay, step out of the car. Step out of the car. Step Wait, out of the car. <laughs> Walter gave a fake name to the officer, but Corporal Session knew that he had found the guy he was looking for. However, just as he forced him to get out of his car, a crazy encounter happened. <laughs> Dude. Go back that way, sir. Go back that way. Come in. Holy shit. Come in. Ma'am! Hey, get back in the house! As officers struggled with Walter, he noticed that he had a sawed-off shotgun with him. He quickly fired at the officer, and the bullet hit the officer's arm. The officer maintained composure and fired back at him. Hearing gunshots, some eager neighbors also came out. I don't have a fucking radio. Get your dog, please. Hey, can you see me, dude? Is he hurt? He still got the gun? No. I dropped my radio doing that. Come in. Fuck. Walter dropped his radio, but fortunately, another female officer arrived on time, who noticed Walter not making any movement inside his car. He's fine. Hold on, sir. Stay on this side of the house. Hey, can you see his hands? Huh? I can't see shit. He's right here. <laughs> Tell him to get out of the car and get on the ground. Get out of the car. He fucking hit me in my arm. Get yeah, I think it just skinned me. We all know about body cameras, but in this instance, the footage was also captured from Corporal Sessions' gun camera, which shows the shocking moment Walter brought out his gun.
Fortunately, the officer was quick to react, and the bullet had only grazed his arm. Both of the officers then decided to close in on the suspect who was heavily injured. If he moves, light his ass up! Both of your hands up! I'm coming to your crossfire! I'm coming to your crossfire! You keep those motherfuckers up, or I'm gonna f you! God damn. Ugh. Fuck. Why the fuck did you do that, bro? Where's that gun at? Keep your hands up! Keep your hands up, bro! Don't Keep your hands up! Don't Give me that hand! Give me your hand! I don't got no bullet. Oh, I can Oh! Get out of the car! I can Yes, you can! Get out of the car! Ah! 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 Where you hit at? Where you shot at, man? Let me take your radio off of you. It appeared as if Walter was shot multiple times as he was bleeding heavily. The officers immediately called for EMS to arrive and take him to the hospital. Notify on call. Then call the captain, then call the chief in that order. Then I need you to call another unit in. In that order, please. I'm going. Let me get let me get you to go. No. Let me get water. Hey, help. Help. Water. Water. Okay, bro. Yeah, I'm good. I think he just skinned me. He just skinned me. He just skinned me. I'm good. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm good. He just skinned me. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Yeah, we need sure. EMS. We need EMS now. Right. Right. Okay. Oh. Where's my... oh. Where are Despite the bullet only grazing his arm, the officer was in terrible pain and needed immediate medical attention. Hey, let them get, let them get everything. Boat right, yeah. block that, you block that. You got some? I got guns in my trunk. I got some right here. I'm good, he just peppered me. I'm good. Was a shotgun? I don't know, bro. I just tried to pull him out of the car. Fucking backed up with me on the fucking, on the car. Fucking reached for a gun. I had no choice. What the fuck did you do that? Yeah, you're good, man. Oh, damn, that hurts. First I'm, shot. Yeah, I'm good. TJ, you alright? Yeah, I think he just peppered me, dude. I'm good. What'd you do with? Finally, the EMS arrived, and a gurney was arranged to move Walter to the ambulance, where he was to be taken to the hospital. Get get. Take those out. He doesn't have. Unlock, just unlock that so I can cover him in the room. I'm putting him in the truck. I'm gonna go. Okay. But it's locked up. My legs are broke, man. My legs are broke. Oh. I hurt like a motherfucker. Oh, yeah. you lucky I didn't put one in your fucking head. You did, man. Oh, you did. Oh, they didn't want to. Oh, leave that one on. I just unlocked this one. Oh, put it on. Oh, 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 this is good. Who's got tape? I don't got tape. Okay, I got tape in the back of my car. I need this. I need all that shit wrapped off. It's in the back of my car. See the unlock button. You can hear it go. Oh, yeah. Hey. When do y'all need to go? I'll, who's ever car is that? I'll move your car. Leave me your key. Leave me your key if you locked it. Just ride in the back with him, okay? They might both have to work on it. You might have to drive. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm good. That shit hurt. At last, EMS also arrived for the injured corporal. It was later discovered that he had taken 41 shotgun pellets to his arm. On the other hand, he had managed to fire eight times at Walter. It's no. That whole arm is numb? Yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead and get you kick your legs up. Play back. No. You can take care of Okay. So. I still need four fire department personnel. He's good, Chief. I'm good. Just, just we're going to go ahead and take him. I, I, want, I need an officer to stay with me on the fire. Sorry. 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 Oh, sorry, Chief. Sorry. Yeah. 
I don't need none of that. We're gonna go ahead and do it. <laughs> That's gonna hurt worse to get shot. I gotta keep this on, so I'm gonna keep Just hang that arm down. Hang it down? Yeah, right there. Perfect. Anyway, like I said, I felt something hit me in the arm, like, while I was out of bullets. I was like, oh, shit. Trying to relax it on my Just find one? Yeah. Fortunately, the aide arrived on time and the brave officer was saved. On the other hand, Walter was rushed to the hospital where he received treatment and also survived his injuries. He was later charged with felony aggravated assault with a deadly weapon on a public official. The jury found him guilty and sentenced him to 40 years in prison, with a minimum of 20 years served before he could get parole. However, he is yet to be charged for the earlier three felonies, which could easily make sure he is behind bars for his whole life. But this is certainly not the last time cops had to use fatal force against a kidnapper. Let me see her ass! <laughs> no, no, no. On the 13th of February, 2024, Phoenix police officers responded to an alarming 911 call. Before we go further, let's hear the call itself. Is this a police or medical emergency? It's a police. I think my mom got robbed or there's a man outside holding her and she yelled my name. What do you mean there's a man outside holding your mom? She was leaving to work and she just yelled away. and I looked outside my window and somebody's holding her mouth and he has like a, a gun and a hoodie. The kidnapper was later found out to be 35-year-old Edward Brown who had forcibly held the woman at gunpoint. Shortly, the cops arrived on the scene urging him to come out. Let me see her ass! He's in that northeast window. He's shooting out the window at us. Take it rounds. <laughs> northbound. He hopped, he hopped the wall northbound, blackmail in a hoodie. Instead of surrendering to the cops, Brown started to fire at the officers through the window. However, realizing that cops from all sides surround him, he decided to flee, not knowing what was about to happen. Got the gun here. Yeah, there's a gun here. Brown was shot and then taken to the hospital where he was treated for his injuries and survived. He was then transported to the jail where he still remains to date and is being charged with multiple felonies, including kidnapping, burglary, and sexual assault. This brings us to the end of this video. Today, we got to see cases where cops were there to catch creepy kidnappers and predators who were lurking around. Particularly concerning was the second case where a police officer was shot. It's truly remarkable how officers frequently risk their lives to confront such despicable predators. We should always hope that such good cops stay around and keep protecting us. And if you have the same concerns, then please consider showing your support by liking this video and also make sure to subscribe to stay informed about future cases like these.